that, and then onwards in chapter 3, that he who sins is of the devil. Can you reconcile those two things in your mind? Is it really self-righteousness to claim that you've stopped doing these things? The scripture says, whoever abides in him sinneth not. He does not produce the fruit of sin. So that doesn't say practice sin. There's nothing in that word, paeo, that means practice. Look it up. Even in the Stroms that waters down many of its translations, uh, like the word grace in others, but that word means to produce, shoot forth, bear. And he says, whoever abides in him sinneth not. Whoever sins, whoever commits these sins, has either seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. There we go again. Let no one deceive you. He that doeth righteousness, he that's producing the fruit of righteousness, is righteous just as he is righteous. Doing what is right, morally upright, virtuous. He who commits, committeth sin in the King James Version, meaning produce, same word, paeo, produces sin, the bad tree bearing the bad fruit is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's the purpose of Christ appearing, not to be a substitute or a magic cover for your sins. Whoever has been born of God sinneth not. Again, he does not produce. He produces a good tree producing good fruit, because he laid the axe to the root of the tree, like John the Baptist said. Make the tree good and its fruit good. He sinneth not, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he's been born of God. That's 1 John 3, uh, verses 6 through 9. And Jesus said in John 8 to the Pharisees, He who commits sin is a slave to sin. So if you're committing these sins even occasionally, occasionally, well, I get drunk occasionally, I go out and fornicate occasionally. I fall back into my perversions of watching that horrible stuff occasionally, then you're not of God. You've not been born of God. There has to be this season of godly sorrow to bring you out of that mess. See, they continually tell people under this lawless gospel, this is our, this is our big contention in the, in the point of departure, the great divide that we keep calling it, that separates us from so many others out there in the so-called remnant camps. See, they tell people that when they repent and receive Jesus, that they're not going to stop sinning. Because if they could, they wouldn't need Jesus and they could self-justify. Because self-righteousness, right? So they enter into this relationship of sin confess and sin confess, and they try to live a holy life and they preach holiness and doing what's right, but yet on the other side of their mouth they argue in favor of sin all day long. So you got this daily repentance and confession, falling short and messing up, and that's the Christian life, making Christ a minister of sin. Back to Galatians 5, uh, 2.17. And anybody that tells you that you've got to forsake your sins, this is a false gospel, well, they're self-righteous hypocrites. See, here's the logic under this. If I can try to make it as clear as I can. Here's the logic. God saves you in your vile sins. He overlooks your inability to rule over them, as we've said time and again. You can't stop sinning because you're unable to rule over it until you receive Jesus. Okay, you receive Jesus, now you gradually stop sinning, but then God is going to hold you accountable for your wrongdoings. Most, because most of you out there, especially outside the system, don't, don't preach eternal security, that nonsense of eternal security. So, you you're going to stop sinning. God's forgiven all those sins, all those stuff, the, the fornications, the uncleanness, the perversion. You've entered into this relationship of accountability, but you're going to stop doing these things gradually. All you've got to do is confess them. So in essence, you're making God double-minded, just like yourself. Coming in double-minded, because you've got to cleanse your hearts, you double-minded, James says. So you say that he's willing to forgive you of all your sins when you received him. You received his spirit to get the power to, to uh, stop sinning. Then you say he's going to hold you accountable for the same sins he just forgave. Well, you cry foul. That's not what we're saying. No, that's exactly what you're saying. But think about it for a minute. You're saying a Christian, a Christian 
entered into Christ is inevitably going to commit these vile sins listed in the scripture that say you won't inherit the kingdom of God. It doesn't say in 1 Corinthians 6, if you do the, if, but if you do them occasionally, it's okay. He says, let no one deceive you with empty words. If you do these things, you won't inherit the kingdom. And again, he says in another passage in uh, Ephesians, he says, let no one deceive you for empty, with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. There's nothing about practice or fall into them occasionally. No, he just simply says, let no one deceive you, again, as we, as we said already two or three times, with empty words, if you, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So you're saying then you do these things, you seek that easy forgiveness of 1 John 1, 9, you're not disqualified from the kingdom because you received Jesus and you have this desire to stop. So you desire to do what's right, but you can't because that would be personal righteousness saving yourself. See, what are you doing? You're destroying souls and you're implying that stopping sin is a bigger sin than actually being in it. That somebody actually claiming to stop their sins, that's the worst sin of all. Because you constantly condemn us to hell and preach sinless perfection and we're d depending on ourselves to get to God, to get into the kingdom. On top of that then, you say, if a person claims to have stopped doing these things in the process of repentance, when they came clean with God, crucified their flesh with passions and desires, been purged of their former sins, they're a liar and there's no truth in them. Because in this twisted logic, actually stopping these type of sins is being perfect as God in self-righteousness in a works gospel heresy. You see, that's the biggest heresy in the world because faith is obedience. You understand faith is faithfulness and obedience and fidelity to God. It's not a one-time confession. That's what the church teaches. God forbid you people outside the system should keep teaching that kind of thing, but yet you do. That's what I don't get. So, although you, you, you turn around and you claim to believe in holiness and obedience and doing the right thing, then you argue in favor of sin all day long and call us liars and hypocrites. You preach this lawless gospel and then you deny it every step of the way that you're preaching it. When your core belief is based on human inability in some manner, like an almost free will, as one brother says, as though God has an almost judgment. I don't know what else to call it. You preach this limited ability, and then you believe that giving man the ability to actually do what God commands is allowing him to self-justify by the works of the flesh, and then pound his chest and say, look what I did. I don't see anybody doing that that's come through real repentance. See, but the real reason, I have to think, dealing with this for so long and so many years, I have to believe within, honestly, that the real reason is that you don't want to stop sinning. You have no intention of stopping. And you think that you can force Christ to be a minister of your sin by some twisted logic that man is unable to stop. And if he does, he's being as righteous and perfect as God. You got arguments for everything we say. No matter how we say it, no matter how plain we make it. We're, you still accuse us, we're saving ourselves. By repenting, by coming clean with God, and past sins are forgiven by His blood only. There's no other way for those sins to be forgiven but by the blood of Christ. But it has to happen through repentance and faith proven by deeds in the Scriptures to bring you from the power of darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. So sadly... You have the majority of professing Christianity on your side, and you command a far greater audience than we could ever imagine in this, any previous generation by use of the airwaves and the media and the printing press and all the rest of it. You have a virtual monopoly over the establishment church system and, if you, and infiltrated very, very well the remnant camps in the World Wide Web, corrupting them with every winded doctrine and theology that's, that could be out there.
You have most of the world convinced that man's born in this corrupted state and depravity, some kind of flesh, fleshly thing lurking in him that he can never stop sinning, and he's always going to be trapped in that body. And as a result, then, we have multitudes of psychopaths running around 